let's face it, real estate agents often get a bad rap lumped together with used car salesmen or insurance agents seen as unprofessional and solely commission driven. Now, the unfortunate truth is, guess what? This negative perception exists for a reason. There are unethical agents out there that are coercing consumers to sign a contract, promising them the moon and the stars just to make a commission. Especially in today's market where there's thousands of agents are throwing in the towel, leaving the real estate business. Plus there's not many homes to sell and they can't keep up with technology because it's evolving so fast and they're getting, go out and getting nine to five jobs. But distinguishing between a bad and a good agent is crucial when you're preparing to sell your house. And in this video, I'm gonna share exactly what you should not reveal to your real estate agent to protect your interests and ensure you work with somebody who truly has your best interest in heart. Not just looking at you as a dollar sign or to pay their car payment or their mortgage. You know what I'm talking about. So let me tell you a quick story about Loretta. I met her about 13 years ago at the White Marsh Day in our township. I went out there, before I went out there, she called me, she said, Diana, this guy told me about selling my house. I let the neighbors know I've been selling and he's throwing contracts in my face saying, sign for 620 and because you have, I don't have central air, it's gonna be 600 and I have a buyer for you, just sign here. And she's like, I don't think so. So she called me up, so I went over, I'm like, oh my God, 600, there's no way. First of all, what we'll do is we'll paint a couple rooms, we'll paint the, the outside concrete, do some outside flowers, things like that, and then we'll sell the home. And so it was early in spring, so it didn't have all the lush landscaping, but they had a really great lot. So what I did was I put on the market for $649, and I ended up getting $720 with $13,000 credit for the central air. So we actually got almost $100,000 more for this house. So really watch what agents are doing out there and watch what you say. Now, what's the largest shark that can eat the most of your equity? It's the real estate agent. All in my book here, in my book here. The agent that you hire that will handle your entire process. It starts at the interview. So I'm gonna go through seven top things never to say to your realtor. And during this video, I'm gonna give you three hot bonus tips throughout the video, so listen for them. Things you will not read online and one foolproof method of hiring a realtor to make sure you don't have to worry about what you say. You shouldn't have to worry about what you say. You should have open communication with your consultant. This is one of your largest assets, right? You wanna create the most amount of equity in selling this asset. So let's get started. First, do not tell your agent you're not in a hurry to sell. You might think saying you're not in a hurry to sell will prevent you from feeling pressured or rushed into making a decision. But here's why conveying your seriousness about selling is crucial. So when you tell your agent you're not in a hurry, kind of often communicate to them it's that your urgency level is low. And in this fast-paced real estate market right now, agents have limited time and resources to allocate to each listing. And if they perceive that your property is not a priority, they may deprioritize your marketing efforts for your home. Imagine this, agents prioritize listing based on perceived urgency, imagine that. So listings that are seen as urgent typically receive more attention and proactive marketing strategies. And if your agent believes you're just testing the market or not really serious about selling soon, they may place your property at the bottom of, of their to-do list. Also, this perception can extend beyond your agent because if potential buyers sense that you're not in a hurry to sell, they may anticipate a price reduction coming soon or assume that negotiations could be less aggressive and potentially delaying their decision to make an offer. Conveying your commitment to selling sends a strong signal to the agent and prospective buyers alike. It shows that you're motivated and serious and you're ready to take action. And this could lead to more proactive efforts for marketing that you should be getting, increased visibility, and ultimately a better chance of securing a timely and favorable sale. So remember that while it's understandable to want to avoid pressure, clearly communicating your intention to sell promptly can actually work in your favor. It positions you as a motivated seller and aligns expectations with your agent and also encourages potential buyers to take action. Now, if you're working with someone like myself or a top agent that I can refer to you in your area, you won't have to worry about that. They will guide you along the way. You can say whatever you want to them and they will take it to the bank for you. Next, do not reveal what you think your house is worth because it's important not to reveal your estimated home value to agent right away. Now, a seasoned agent like myself may not even want to take your listing if your price is unreasonable. I won't even show up. So I interview the seller before I take 
my time to meet with them. I ask them if they have any idea of what their home is worth because I don't have a problem telling a seller their way off price and will take the time to show them that they're off so they understand. But what you can do before you meet is to do your own research, take the time to do that, look at comparable properties in your area, look at recent sales of similar homes in your neighborhood to get an accurate picture of the current market value. Now, if your home is unique and not like others in your neighborhood or you're, you're not in a particular neighborhood where homes are like the same, this is gonna be a little difficult, but you can do it. And you can look at your Zestimate in Zillow, however, it's only a more accurate determination if your home is similar to others in your neighborhood. But Zillow just looks at your lot size and your square footage and what homes are selling for in your neighborhood. It doesn't really give you anything more than that. It's just an algorithm. So, but if you do some research, you can get some solid foundation and make you better prepared for discussions with your agent. As you want to avoid manipulation, because if you disclose your estimated home value too early, an unethical agent might tailor their valuation to meet your expectations, especially if your number is lower than the market value. They only want to secure their listing. They want to pay their mortgage, right? They want to get it quickly and get on the market and sell it with minimal effort. That's what realtors mostly just like to do. Now this tactic benefits the agent, but can result in you underselling your property. But on the flip side, say, if your estimate's too high, some agents I could talk about, and they may agree with your inflated price just to buy your listing. They won't tell you that this is too high like I would do. So what is buying your listing? It means they're gonna tell you whatever you wanna hear to win your business, even if the price isn't realistic. And once the contract's signed, they'll push for price reductions. You'll see this big price reduce sign on your lawn, which means come buy me at a low price, which can lead to even longer market times and a sale for you that's below the market value. But a trustworthy agent, something like myself, will provide an accurate valuation based on current market data. And if you withhold your estimate initially, you encourage the agent to perform a thorough analysis, actually go to work. And then you can compare, compare their, their findings with your research, ensuring uh, a more objective and realistic assessment. Because if an agent knows your bottom line, they may not negotiate as aggressively on your behalf, thinking you already are content with a certain number. And so maintain some mystery about your expectations. It can motivate the agents to strive for, you know, the best possible outcome. Now selling a home is stressful enough. And if you share a high estimate, it might create unrealistic price expectations for the sale process and your home doesn't sell. And that can be very frustrating and disappointing. So it's better to let an agent provide their professional opinion first, then discuss and align your expectations based on realistic market conditions. Sounds reasonable? Next one, now don't go away because I'm gonna give you one bonus tip here. Number three is do not tell them they are the only one being interviewed. Why do you ask? Well, interviewing multiple agents allows you to compare their services and experience and approach as each agent will have a unique strategy for marketing and selling your home. This ensures you get the highest quality service and the best possible outcome for your sale. That's what you're looking for. This is your number one asset, right? So. When they just know they are competing for your business, they're more likely to put their best foot forward with a compelling marketing plan and pricing strategies and sales pitches, you know? Now, I don't understand this as we do this for all of our clients. We give them 100%. However, there is a 90-10 rule, not 80-20 with realtors here. So they do the least amount of work to get done quickly and make the money. So it's a competitive environment. If you make it competitive, it motivates the agents to demonstrate their full range of services. It ensures you that you choose the one with the most robust marketing plan because different agents might have varying opinions on the right listing price based on their market knowledge and experience, right? So if you interview multiple agents, you can compare their suggested price with the justifications behind them. And this helps you avoid overpricing or underpricing your home. By meeting with several agents, you can better gauge their professionalism, their communication style, and the overall compatibility with you. You gotta be able to get along with their agent, right? And it ensures a smoother and more effective working relationship throughout the home selling process. And knowing that there are other agents in the running, the agent you choose may be more flexible with their commission rates and terms. However, I don't like to consider you to hire the agent because of saving, like say 1% commission. I don't go with the agent with the lowest rates because they won't do anything for you anyway. And especially if they can't negotiate their commission, then how are they gonna negotiate for you? You wanna work with an agent that stands by their rates because they feel what their time is worth. 
and they show you everything, what they're going to do. We do give a lower commission rate if we find the buyer or the seller has a buyer. So I have a hot tip for you. Here it is. Hot tip number one. You do not want to bring, for example, any realtor into your home until you have interviewed them on the phone. Yes, interview them on the phone. You heard me. Do not bring anybody in your house until you have an interview. I have a list of questions to ask before meeting with them. Please get them below. Each interview is going to take at least two hours and it's exhausting. You don't want to bring the wrong people in your house to find that they're just not the right person. So by interviewing at least three agents on the phone first, you can identify the, the agents who, who aligns best with you and with your needs and with your expectations. This will ensure you have two or three top agents to meet with. And you might have to go through 10 interviews just to find two or three agents in, in this area, in the area that you're in. When you're on the phone with them, you're interviewing them. You can see how organized they are if, and if they have a list of interview questions for you. Like we have a list, we're gonna go through them, we're gonna get it all out there. The seller doesn't wanna go through it with me, we're just not gonna walk out, we're not gonna go over. We can tell whether that's gonna be a good client for us. So this is usually your best agent who has questions for you. Good concrete questions. So, are you learning something? Please subscribe. Get for 600 subscribers by the end of August. Come on, help a girl out. Thank you. So, telling an agent that the only one being interviewed removes the competitive edge that drives them to offer their best service. You want to make sure you receive the highest quality service, right? You want the most effective marketing strategies, the best pricing options available. That's why you don't do that. Next, number four, do not tell the agent they have the listing too soon. As you're interviewing the agents to list your home, it's crucial to not, to not commit to any agent too quickly. You want to have a thorough evaluation of their marketing plan, strategies, services, commission, all that stuff. So understand their approach to marketing your property, including online listings, open houses, professional photography, drone photography, and other promotional activities. And by, thoroughly, and by thoroughly evaluating their plan, you can gauge the effectiveness and the creativity of their marketing efforts and make sure every promise made during their presentation is included in the listing contract or you're gonna face disappointment later. I've seen it happen. They say things, they don't show. So make sure that they show you what they do. Bring their computer, show you all the things that they've done before. Don't just tell you because an agent without this should not be coming to your home wasting your time. That's why you get the questions to ask before meeting the agent at your house. You're gonna have all this information ahead of time. You can research them, everything you can do before they even walk through the door. So if you get time beforehand even to go through the agent's entire presentation while they're at the, then you bring up, you say, well, I'm gonna bring them to the house and they go through the rest of your presentation of their presentation, ensures that, that both of you and the agent are on the same page regarding expectations timelines, responsibilities. There's a lot of that. It also allows you to assess the agent's professionalism, attention to detail, and thoroughness as you are looking for a more dedicated agent who is professional in their approach. Not a fly-by agent just walks through the door. Now, if you commit to an agent too soon, you lose the opportunity to compare their marketing strategies and their fee structures and levels of enthusiasm. This comparison is so crucial in selecting the agent who is best suited to sell your property effectively. Assumptions can lead to unmet expectations and fr frustrations, I've seen it happen. So give yourself the opportunity to ask the detailed questions and clarify any points of confusion before they walk through the door, okay? Because this sets realistic expectations and avoids surprises down the line if you decide to hire them. I've seen it happen, like I say, like I said, I've seen this happen. So select the best agent, avoid misunderstandings, and ensure a smooth and successful home selling process. That's what it's all about. Okay, getting down to the nitty gritty here. Number five, don't share your bottom line up front. It's crucial to keep your bottom line number confidential initially. Why, Diane, don't I do that? Well, your bottom line, guys, is essentially the minimum amount you're willing to accept for your property. Revealing this number too soon can significantly weaken your negotiating position because an unethical agent, they're out there, might use your bottom line to their advantage. They can manipulate the negotiation process to secure a quick sale, even if it means selling for a lower price than you should have been getting. This could involve advising you to accept lower offers or not aggressively negotiating on your behalf. Yes, this happens, okay? So by not sharing your bottom line up front, it ensures their valuation and marketing efforts are based on market data and their professional judgment rather than just meeting your minimum criteria. Plus, if you do not want to be locked into a disclosed minimum number, 
that's very important. You do not want to be, right? You don't want to be this, be this minimum. You want to be able to have more possibilities out there because ultimately your goal is selling your home to maximize your financial return. And you want to do this stress-free, right? So if you disclose your bottom line prematurely, ensure stronger negotiations, leverage, and also protects against unethical practices, and also promotes better financial outcomes for you. Number six, don't ask for a standard six-month listing contract. As you, the homeowner, homeowner, you have the right to dictate the terms of your listing agreement, including the time frame. Here's why opting for a three-month contract instead of a standard six-month contract can be more advantageous because a three-month contract gives you greater flexibility and control over the selling process. And if you're not satisfied with the performance of your real estate agent, a shorter contract allows you to switch agents more quickly without being locked into a long-term commitment, okay? And this flexibility ensures that you're not stuck with this agent who isn't meeting your expectations or delivering results. And also the shorting listing periods can motivate agents to be more productive and proactive in their marketing and showing the home and negotiations to potential buyers. The increased urgency can lead to a faster sale and definitely better offers. And a three month contract, I think also helps that you ensure that your property receives the attention and effort it deserves right from the start because they get right into the dinner. And also you can also test the market and assess their agent strategies, right? And if your home doesn't sell, reevaluate the pricing. You can change the marketing approach. So you have that shorter time period, even the choice of agent based on the feedback and results from the initial period. Bonus tip number, I'm not sure what number it is, but it's a bonus tip coming in here. Get an easy exit agreement that after 30 days on the market, you can part ways. I've been doing this for 30 years. I never gotten fired. However, it keeps me motivated to make things happen for my client. I, got more, I get more referrals and I have this prosperous business. So here is our easy exit agreement. We make it 30 days from the first day of showings. If in 30 days, they're not home isn't sold or not happy with, we can be fired. We can let, we'll part ways. Now we say 30 days from showings because we take usually two to three months even to get the house ready for sale because we do, all of our work is up front. You know, so we do a 30 days from actually going on the market and showing the house. And that's why I really like it when my clients hire me a year in advance, maybe two years. I make sure we get it done right. I can't say this enough. If you go to futurehomesellers.com, you can see why. Futurehomesellers.com is for my future home sellers, all the information you need. Because you only get one shot at this. A bad decision here, you know, is, like I said, it's one of the biggest sharks that can eat up most of your equity and cause you the most amount of stress is not hiring the right realtor. Now, if you like that bonus tip, please subscribe. Help a girl out, get to 600 subscribers. Now, remember, like any good agent is gonna be, will have no problem willing to discuss and customize the contract duration. They have no problem doing three months. They know they're gonna get the job done. And you wanna run from an agent who is pushing a longer than three months or doesn't have an easy exit agreement, you know? It strikes a balance between allowing sufficient time for effective marketing and not committing too long. That's why you wanna do it especially if they're not delivering results. Listen, you wanna sell the house. That's your primary interest, which is your largest asset. You wanna get the best price, shortest amount of time, least amount of stress, all that great stuff. So even though a six month contract might be standard, there's no real standard. It's not always in the best interest unless there's an easy exit addendum. It's okay six months as long as there's an easy exit addendum on the listing contract. Make sure you have that. That's a good bonus. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe for more tips like that. Next, number seven. Don't ask if it's a good time to sell. So they might say, oh, it's always a good time to sell, especially when they can you know, have an opportunity to have a, a listing and make money. But it's based on favorable market conditions. Uh, like right now we have high demand or, and we have a low inventory. But these market conditions might not align with your personal circumstances. For example, factors as your, uh, say for example, your financial stability, job situation, family needs, and future plans are cr crucial to determining the right time to sell for you. A really good real estate agent, even on the first interview, when they're interviewing you while you're interviewing them, a good real estate agent will take the time to understand your unique situation. They'll consider all your reasons for selling and then give advice relevant to, to your needs rather than some generic market assessment. I do have in my next bonus and last bonus tip right here, make sure your agent takes you through a process of clarifying your values before showcasing their great marketing plan they have. They should start out sometimes with, without even seeing the home. That's what we do, we sit down. No computer, just have my notepad and ask my clients 
future clients, what is important to you about selling your home? And until I realize or they realize that I've heard them until like you as a seller realize that the agent has heard you, that's a big one, they must have heard you, then and can only consider that agent. You know, how many times does an agent just walk through the door, starts going through the different rooms, telling you what you could and couldn't do, without really understanding your needs? I don't know, I, you can't give advice when you don't understand what's important to the seller. You can't have one marketing plan for every home seller. It doesn't work that way. They kind of walk through the house, oh, so you have a beautiful home. They just want to kind of win you over. You probably can get that sense when you're doing the phone interview. I'm going to give you great questions so you don't do that. Because selling home, it's really not just a financial transaction. It's a significant life decision. So really, guys, you need to ensure that your decision to sell supports your, what's important to you, your broader life goals. Because the emotional aspect of selling a home can't be ignored. It can be stressful. And our goal when we sell houses is to take that stress off of our clients. Because your house, it's full of memories and emotional attachments, right? So if you're a really good agent, you find a really good agent, they're gonna recognize these factors and provide guidance that respects your emotional well-being, ensuring you'll feel confident and comfortable with the timing of the sale. And that's how we get all our referrals. That's how the agent wants to work so they can get new business referred by their clients. Because sometimes I've told people not to sell because it's not their best option. So the goal here isn't to keep secrets from your agent, but to ensure you build a trustworthy relationship where both of you are working together towards the same goal. Selling your house at the best possible price, least amount of stress and worries. An ethical agent, they're out there. It's important to find one who truly has your best interest at heart. So if you're looking for a great agent to help you sell your home, I'm happy to share my database of ethical and honest, it's really great agents all over the United States. So if you click below, fill out the form, I'll connect you with some honest agents in your area. Hopefully I have one in your area. I can pretty much get one in most areas. Uh, and remember, it's about finding the right fit for you and your needs. Because first what I do is a 30 minute conversation with you understanding your needs. So I can communicate that to the realtor we, we introduce you to, okay? So we also get together with you and maybe do like a walkthrough of your home and on Zoom and just kind of get an understanding of what you're trying to create. So thanks for watching. Diane Cardano here, your guide to your, by your side. Uh, and I am so happy you're be trying to become a savvy home seller watching this video. And don't miss out for more tips and insights to ace your real estate journey. Stay tuned for the next video on how we give you the 10 tips that you should not remodel, ways you shouldn't remodel. And I'll see you the next one.